Hey guys, what's up? It's Jen on Acre by the Creek. Today is peak season garden tour day. Today I am going to show you a tour of my garden at its peak. It is the end of July and I am growing in Pennsylvania zone 6A. So let's get into it and I'll show you guys what I've got growing. I have kind of a big thing to share with you guys. This garden is going to look very different and not only because we're heading into fall, but before we even get there, I need to make some changes. So let me explain. Now I will start by saying I was really upset by this information at first. I've now had some time to sleep on it and marinate on my game plan. I am going to be tearing out my cucurbit wall. Unfortunately, my garden was victim to the squash vine borer. If you guys don't know, it's basically a bug that goes into the plant and kills it from the inside out. I have noticed over the last several weeks that my zucchini plants just weren't producing. I harvested two zucchini plants. And if you've ever gardened before, or even if this is your first year, you know that by July, you are up to your eyeballs in squash. Like you don't even know where to put it all. And I'm like, this is so odd. I don't know what's going on here. Like, why am I not getting any squash out of this? I talked to some other people in my local area and they were saying, yeah, it's a weird year for me too. I'm not getting any squash, you know? And so I just wrote it off. Eh, maybe it's a weird year. Well, sure enough, I finally saw the evidence that I had been afraid of that I did in fact have squash vine borers. And I'll go ahead and show you guys what that looks like. I saw that my plant was split open and that I had some of this frass, which I think is technically just caterpillar poop. And I was seeing it basically everywhere. Like I said, my plants weren't producing. And that's also another major red flag. If you're not getting any fruit out, your plant is struggling and there's a reason for that. Fruits are all at different stages of ripening. You can see some are slightly more yellow than others. And I am hoping if I pull these off that they'll continue ripening for me. There are some things that you can do when you discover that you have squash vine borers. You can do BT injections, you can do plant surgery, and all kinds of things, but I'm at the point right now in my garden where I could definitely try these things and it might work or it might kill my plant that I'm just not really feeling like doing that. To me, it's easier to rip the plants out, let the fruit ripen that can still ripen, and then just utilize this space for something for a fall crop. It doesn't make sense for me to sit here and cross my fingers and toes and hope that my efforts work where I know I can take this stuff out of here and get a really great second planting done. Having this cucurbit wall and this vining trellis was really my whole garden goal this year. I had the picture in my head of what it was going to look like when everything started to produce, all of the fruits were laying over the trellises and how awesome it was going to be. And I'm thankful that I was able to experience that a little bit. Of course, I wish that I could have taken it to the end of the season, but sometimes things don't work out that way and you just have to learn to be resilient and roll with what you're given. Anyways, let's just get into the rest of this garden tour. Enough with this sadness. I just wanted to let you guys know and take it in maybe one last time. Um, of my cucurbit wall and it's after this you won't be seeing it anymore the cucurbit walls are really big parts of my garden so i just wanted to share that with you but enough of that i want to show you guys everything else that's going on because i do have some really fun things happening i have lots of stuff coming up and peaking starting to ripen and i'm getting really excited for all of the things that are going to come out of my garden even though i'm going to experience these losses you guys can see that the peppers are doing really great they're basically up to my hips which is really exciting i am starting to get some fruit coming off of these lots of blooms i'll do some close-ups so that you all can see that but i'm really excited to get these peppers off and get them preserved eat them fresh all of the things i just can't wait to have my first ripe pepper that hasn't happened yet but i know that it's coming really really soon right next door to the peppers are the tomatoes and you can see they are incredibly tall now now i'm five foot six and these are all taller than me so just to give you an idea they're doing really great it's been extremely hot, so I haven't been getting much new fruit set, but the fruit that I have is looking great. Um, I have had issues with hornworms and the early blight like you guys have seen, but nonetheless, these plants are producing for me and they're even starting to ripen. Here we have a hornworm that succumbed to the braconid wasp. And these are our first blushers. I've already harvested a couple, but you can see they are starting to ripen for me. 
that about does it for the main summer garden. Due to the loss of the cucurbit wall, I am basically down to peppers and tomatoes here, which is okay because like I said, I'm gonna have a ton of stuff coming for the fall garden. Thankfully, I was able to harvest some pickles. I harvested a whole two zucchini. And like I told you, I'm gonna try and see if I can get these spaghetti squash to ripen the rest of the way so that we can at least enjoy those. With that being said, I am planning to cut off some of the suckers. And along this wall, I might just put a couple of my suckers sewed in. That way I can get a second round of tomatoes a little bit later in the season because these are gonna start petering off now. It almost works out for the better. I love homegrown tomatoes, so getting my suckers off and plant it over here might end up working really well and making me really happy having some tomatoes later on in the season. So just always try to find the bright side, guys. I promise there's always gonna be one there. I'm gonna keep it real with you guys. I haven't really weeded before this video. I just wanted to film it for you and get it out so that you guys could watch it. Um, but my floral buds are doing really well. Everything has really taken off. I had a little bit of a mishap where Haley dug up some parts of this side of the floral bed, but a lot of it bounced back. There are a couple of bare areas but that's just the way that it goes so um, I'll go ahead and show you guys how everything is doing here here we've got the first canna lily flower has just started to open up within the last day or so really pretty red very vibrant and fun the vincas have really filled in and done a great job this here is the coleus plant that Haley trampled these look bad to you but to me they look great all of the branches had completely snapped off and then I just stuck them in the ground and I said, let's see what happens. And they are starting to look better. They are, I know they're starting to root. There's some firmness when I pull. And so I know these will rebound and they will do well for me until the end of the season. And surrounding, you can see all of the vincas and then the snapdragon and another canna back there. No flower on that guy yet. This is another part that got hit by Haley. This was um, some of these petunias. You can still see them in here, but they definitely got a little bit injured there. And this is the mirror of that other bed. So it's just most of the same. This one did not get trampled, however. So you can see how nice and full the coleus is. Have some more echinacea coming in here, cone flowers. And you can see my snapdragons are really covered in these little, little beetles. These are the wee harlequin bugs and they have really taken to the Snapdragon. Now, I'm not kidding when I tell you I'm gonna show you the good, the bad, and the ugly. In this tunnel here is where I have my tomato hanging baskets, all but one are under here, and then also my strawberry hanging basket. All of the tomato hanging baskets have set fruit. They're doing okay. Some of the leaves have been discolored, and of course, because they're in these smaller containers, they have struggled for water on these really hot 100 degree days. I try to water them every night after we've had one of those really high temp days, but it, I mean, it's just really hot and they do end up drying out. So it's a little bit of stress for the plant. I was creating a lot of guilt about the hornworms and how many of them I was killing. If you don't know, they do turn into the Sphinx moth, which are really beautiful. I'll pop a picture up onto the screen and I don't know, it just kind of got the hippie side in me where I thought I can't just keep killing these. They're part of the environment. Of course, they are hurting my tomato plants, but I just don't have it in me to be part of the reason that this population gets wiped out. So I had this idea where if I find a hornworm, which we all know that I will, that I would give them to, or I would give the tomato hanging baskets to them. So I would move them and relocate them to the hanging baskets. So far since making this decision, I've only found one, but he's still in the basket that I placed him on. And I feel better because I didn't kill him and he's gonna turn into a beautiful moth. He seems pretty happy. He has already eaten these two branches off and moved on to this one here. But this is my gift to you, little guy. And this tomato basket, as you guys can see, I guess I haven't done a full update on these things, but you can see this one did end up falling over, which is cool, so it didn't get incredibly tall. And it's got its first ripening tomato right on this side. So I will definitely be doing hanging baskets again, even if it's a variety that they say you shouldn't do in a hanging basket. Now, if you think those discolored tomato plants are the ugly part that I was telling you about, that's so not as bad as it gets. Can you hear the crunch in this thing? I have this really nice strawberry hanging basket, but it just didn't fare well. The greenhouse put a ton of plants in the same one. It ended up putting off all of these runners 
and it just has not been doing well with all of this heat. Not only that, the Japanese beetles loved this plant. It looks like you took a whole puncher to these leaves. They're extremely damaged, they're dry. I don't know how this plant is gonna make it. The plan for me was to take my strawberry ha hanging basket and make a raised bed for all of my strawberries. I wanted my strawberries to be in a raised bed. I don't want them just going all over the place. And so I was waiting until I got the time to do that. And obviously this plant did not do well with the weight. I'm still gonna try to save what I can and make a raised bed. I hope I really can get to it this season. We're just really swamped. But if I can, I would really love to make a raised bed for strawberries and make it so that we have a nice flow of strawberries coming in next year. Feels so bad how these strawberry plants have fared. Here we have the row of blueberry bushes. They are done at this point. Honestly, guys, we didn't even get really a harvest off. My daughter would just come through and pick the berries off before we even had a chance to. So I'm hoping to get more bushes as well as for these to get bigger and give us more blueberries in the future. In between the blueberry bushes, I also sowed some zinnias. They're not blooming yet, but hopefully soon. Although this strawberry planter also has some Japanese beetle damage, it is looking much better from the first video that I showed you guys. In case you don't remember, this is the planter that looked really lime green, so it was able to get those nutrients and get a little bit darker of a green color. The Japanese beetles still attack this one, but I have a lot more hope for this planter than I do for the hanging basket. Over in this container, I have some fava beans coming. You guys saw me do this in my second summer planting. Back in the cabbage patch here, I am getting ready to pull the broccoli as well as the cauliflower. So I'm gonna get rid of these two things here. Like I said, we're getting ready for the fall garden. These marigolds have gotten incredibly tall, but not really given me many blooms. Just a couple, which is really annoying to me. They've gotten so big, but I haven't barely gotten any blooms off of them. So not my favorite marigold seed that I've ever done. The tomato plants here are doing well my garden is thriving on neglect right now but i'm still getting tomatoes we have our last hanging tomato basket and this was the one with all of the flowers and things on top so this one's also doing really well you can see just how awesome the wojo's gem is it's nice and long and there are the roma tomatoes so all of the tom tomato baskets fruited and even more than just having gotten the fruit off of them i think that they look really cool definitely gonna be doing this again in the future like i said they might be sacrificial lambs for the hornworms but either way they're really fun to do and i would totally recommend that you guys give it a try in my garden pep talk i talked about how my snap peas got mildewy and just kind of quit on me like i said guys the good the bad and the ugly this is definitely the ugly this is getting pulled up hopefully by this weekend and getting reseeded for more peas though for the fall and the last container over here are the radishes that did nothing for me. You can see they're just spindly little nothing. So these will go into compost and I'll also be reseeding this container for more radishes in a different location for fall. So just for the sake of the fact that I showed you guys this in the first garden tour, I'll show you everything that we have going on in the front of the house. But this is the green stock that I planted. Well, it's not a real green stock, it's from Aldi. But, but so far everything in it is doing really well and I really just love this whole container, it's so cute. And there's just a couple more things up front to show you. Okay, so in the back we have the lavender topiary, which you guys saw in my Make Your Own Essential Oils video. This here is just a little rambling potato vine that I had left over. And then this here is actually called the fairy polyantha and it's a rose bush. She's just a little itty bitty baby. Um, she's living in this container right now because it's too hot for me to put her in the ground. I don't want to expose the roots to that. But this was sent to me by a friend that I met on Instagram. Sadie sent me this bush just because she knew how much I loved it and now it means so much to me just because it came from her. I swear plant gifts are just so much more special than anything else. All of the plants that have been given to me are like so sentimental to me and I take such like I take good care of all my plants, at least I try to, but the ones that someone gave to me, I just have so much love for them and I really feel connected to them and I want to see them thrive. So I'm really excited to see how this flourishes in the future. For now, she's just hanging out in this container, but um, hopefully sooner than later, I can get her in the ground and figure out a good spot for her to hang out forever. Now, the, the seeds that I told you guys, I didn't remember what they were in this long fern bed are just marigolds. This is just a cover crop in the seed packet that I got. It said that it was a mix of both annuals and perennials. 
So these are the annuals that pop up now and then next year I should get the perennials. So just marigolds, nothing special, but just something to kind of fill in until the other things can come up. So here we are at the front porch, not much to see here. A couple of the lettuce containers that I haven't reseeded yet. And then we have the geraniums, which are currently on a bloom break. This is the one that has the bird's nest in there. So I've tried not to mess with this one too much because I don't want to upset those birds. All right guys, that about does it for this peak season garden tour. Like I said at the beginning of the video, things are about to change a lot. Things are going to start looking really different. We're going to rip out those cucurbit walls and just get the fall garden rolling. I hope that this showed you that all of us experience loss and it's just part of gardening and you just have to kind of adapt, overcome and keep moving forward. Get on to the next thing and start making your next level of plans and adjusting next time so that you don't run into the same issues. If you made it to the end of the video, please give it a thumbs up. Make sure that you're subscribed to my channel down below. That way you don't see how the fall garden unfolds. I'll be back on Friday with another video. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.